Hello again, everybody. A warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got John here to go over everything that happened against Atalanta. We're going to go through the Motherwell game as well, a preview of the Motherwell game, a game that's just as important, if not more important, than the Atalanta game for me anyway. Uh, let's bring in John quickly. The new John, how's things, buddy, after the Atlanta, Atlanta game? It was a tough watch, wasn't it? Aye, it was hard to watch. Very hard to watch. But uh, look, the results all that matters in the end up. It was just horrible watching Celtic uh, defend for their lives like that. But it's something we're not that used to seeing. But it's also something we need to do in the Champions League. Uh, and I'm glad that's the tactics Brendan decided to use. Defend for your lives and leave there with something that makes the trip worthwhile, Xander. Yeah. I think you said in the, the preview of the Atalanta game that Brendan's got to change it. He's got to sometimes play the long ball. He did that, John. We've got to defend for our lives. He did that as well. So although he came out after the Dortmund game and said that he wasn't going to change things, he, he totally changed it, didn't he? Aye, but uh, look, that Atalanta team are a fantastic team. You cannot deny that. I think they were better than Dortmund. Going forward, they were just very... Unlucky that they came up against a, a really good defence on the night and cash for Michael, of course. But I, I, Atalanta, what a team. Yeah, they were decent. They were more than decent, weren't they? And John, the thing about Dortmund is that everything that they, they hit at the Celtic goal went in. Everything Atalanta hit at the Celtic goal was saved by cash for Michael and goal. So uh, let's have a, let's have a, just a wee quick post match on this game, John, very quickly because we're going to have to go through the Motherwell game as well. But let's go through the defence, John, because although we defended as a team and it was all 10 men behind the ball for most of that game, it was the defence that was absolutely solid, John. Your Johnstons, Alex Valley, uh, even Big Trusty was outstanding as well and Scales, obviously, as usual, 100% self, solid at the back. Um, and Smeichel, John, and goals. I mean, I, I counted about eight top-class saves in that game from Casper Schmeichel. Um, they just pepper their goal constantly with shots and efforts, but the defence was there to clear up absolutely everything there, John. It was. It was like watching Celtic against, uh, I don't know, Aloha at Celtic Park. <laughs> it, was, it was on that kind of level. Celtic are a better team than what they showed. They could have went gung-ho, played their own game and got exposed at the back, which is probably which would have happened. I think if Celtic would have played their own game, their normal game, I think they would have been exposed at the back. And they could have left there by a heavy defeat. We don't know because that never happened. But I look I'm just I'm just glad that it filled my heart with joy seeing Celtic no going away from home against a top team and getting absolutely scalped. Because I think deep down in everybody's heart they were expecting that. Because Atalanta are a top top team under. I think they're going to be there competing in the later stages. Mm, yeah, of course they're John. There's uh, superstars in their team from defence right through to the attack. Superstars. So um, and Celtic did have a couple of chances. They had the, the, the shot that was tipped over the bar. Good save for their keeper. And then there was the Kyogo chance. Wasn't there? They sort of scuffed his shot, tried to take it on the volley when he could have took a touch. So there was a couple of chances for Celtic team. Maybe snatch nice the goal. Nice wee effort from uh, on the angles as well. The keeper had to parry away. Yeah, that was. Uh, he could have picked a corner, but it was uh, a decent save, a decent shot. Yeah, it was, it was an effort at least, John and Goal, wasn't it? So, uh, aye, aye, it's, uh, it was a brilliant point, uh, superb point. You know, going, going to Italy and playing a team like Atalanta and no conceding a goal, absolutely brilliant. It, it was just our defence, uh, confidence, the world are good. This is it. It's, it can only bear well for the defenders. The defenders, I thought they were... Every one of them were outstanding on the night. They did their job impeccably. Impeccably, I thought every defender to a man, I thought they were outstanding. They did a great job. Alistair Johnson, of course, had to watch his step. Booked in, was it three minutes or something, the yellow card, which I don't mm -hmm. think the referee had to flash so fast. Yeah, it was the same referee that sent two off against Feyenoord last season. Same referee, so that was a concern for me, especially with... Alistair picking up that yellow in the first couple of minutes. That was a big concern. But he coached it really quite well, I think, Alistair. He, and there was a tackle one point in the game where he had to go and fly and clear the ball. And, it, and just as well, he got to the ball first. And it was a great defensive tackle. Uh, but that was one of the ones, John. Any 
missed time with that tackle, he was off the park. Aye, aye. I don't remember the incident, but obviously there was a lot of incidents, so it's hard to remember every single incident. But uh, aye, uh, it's a game I don't want to watch back again. Put put it that way, I don't want to be watching that game again. Because Celtics know about defending, they're about attacking, and to see them in a whole different light as a defensive unit, it was refreshing in a sense, but to watch their goal getting there. Uh, peppered with shots and stuff it's never it's never good to watch that and like I don't need to watch it again I know what the score was um, and if Celtic need to defend in the future we can see that they're more than capable so there's good things to take out of it Xander yeah of course there is John um, it, was, it was just a brilliant point it really was you know nobody expected it John nobody expected Celtic to come out there with a point Um but what I will say is I think we were missing a, you know, a rock, sort of a, I don't know, maybe a Wanyama type player in the, the in the middle of the park, John, you know, to help out the defence as well. We were sort of a, I wouldn't say we were soft, but from middle to front, we were, there's no strength in there. You've got Engels, he's not the strongest player. Callum, he's, he's a brilliant player, but he's no quite got the strength of a, a Scott Brown or a Wanyama. Uh, and then you've got your front three who are very lightweight, John. So, but we're missing a sort of a, you know, bulky midfielder, I think, a Scott Brown, a, a Victor Wanyama type. I think we were missing a lot of different things. Um, I'm just going to take my hat off to the boys. They did well and they got the result. That's all I'll say. But I like these, these type of players, Wanyama and all that, the guys that kind of, you know, they're very strong on the ball and all that stuff. And you're right, we don't have a lot of strength in the centre of the park. Hitati's normally quite a strong player, but I think on the night, I think Hitati was probably the poorest player on the park. Yeah, he's, again, it's just part of that you know, midfield that, you know, brilliant technical ability. Um, one is championship after championship, cup after cup, John, but we need, we need, in Europe especially, away from home, we need that sort of a tank in midfield, don't we? So, um, maybe that's something Brendan will look at for um, uh, the next, uh, you know, after the, the, the 16 stage, you know, but if we get to the 16 stage, maybe in January, you can maybe look at bulking up that midfield a wee bit, John, that's where I look at it. A wee word on Casper, John, you know, that's the reason why we signed Casper Michael, you know, top class saves, went it against a world class team, John. The saves he was pulling off, you know, and we just Casper on the 38, is he? You know, he, he was he was diving about that box like a twenty five year old, wasn't he? He was outstanding, Casper. A really, really good performance from him. Uh, I thought I, I didn't know just going to. You can thank him for that result, really, but the whole defence as well. But they stopped a lot going into the box. Big trusty, I think. The pick of the back four, I'd probably say trusty was the man of the match, or the defender of the match, I thought he was outstanding. I wasn't expecting that kind of performance from him, but I, I thought a uh, big trustee and Liam Scales as a partnership, I thought the two of them were outstanding. Alistair Johnson, of course. It's a pity Alistair Johnson's not a central midfielder, because what a job he'd do in there, Zander. Exactly, John. He's, uh, he's, just, uh, he's just a wee rock, isn't he? He's solid at the back. He really is. And, and he likes nothing past him, really. Absolutely nothing. You know, that's Atalanta we're talking about, John, the UEFA Cup champions, you know, that's um, yeah, although they, they did have some good wingers Atalanta, they, they, they really are a decent team, but you know, I think we coped it well but it was heart in the mouth stuff for most of that game Was How do you think Celtic would have done at Celtic Park against them, Xander? I think it would have been a similar sort of game John, maybe we would have um, came out a wee bit more Less defensively, possibly, but we might have been exposed against um, top quality like that, John. Um, you know, uh, yeah, just they're just a decent team, they really are, and we came away with a, with a point, John. So that's it. We don't need to face them again. So that's the that's this new format, John. We don't need to play them at home. That's so that's a good that's a good point, actually. We don't need to worry about that. So <laughs> next up for us is Leipzig, John. Let's have a, let's let's look at them right just very quickly before we go to the Motherwell game. Um, they're missing their main striker, John. Xavi Simmons, John Xavi Simmons, a very decent player. Xavi Simmons, I've seen him plenty of times 
like you played for PSG at one point as well, Xavi Simmons. Uh, so he's missing. He's 100% out for this one, John. Um, that can only be a bonus for us. Aye. Well, just want all these teams playing with their B teams against Celtic, didn't you? <laughs> but like last night when Rangers played Shettleston Juniors. Uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Who was that? I've never even heard of that team they were playing, and they rested their whole team for that game. And I'm sure they were out letting our fireworks celebrate that. You know, I heard the Ross they were playing against the FCSB. John, I've never heard of them. Remaining team FCSB rested. John, you're right. They actually rested. There's, there's the. <laughs> it's quite funny when you look at it. There's. The clip regarding it, John. I don't know if you can see that through our names there, but especially that the manager saying he's going to rest his full team for the Europa League clash because he's got two derbies coming up in his um, home league, John. So he's resting his full team, and I've never heard of them. The remaining team for a start, never heard of them. As you say, Ranger supporters yet again setting off fireworks for a four nothing win against um, remaining Minnows B, John. Remaining Minnows B team. So. Yeah, that's they're going to do that, John. They, that's, they're just at the wind up, you know. The Ranger supporters, you know, Celtic got a very respectable uh, one each. Uh, sorry, nothing each draw with you know Atalanta, John, and not one fire went off. As I said in the last podcast, John, we're just a different level for them. Uh, and uh, obviously, I don't live well, in Glasgow, so I don't hear fireworks going off. But I can picture it because <laughs> I spent my whole life there. Um. Aye, uh, they're, like, it's up to them what they do. If they want to celebrate beating Shettleston Juniors, that's up to them. And that's the equivalent that they were playing. A team that nobody's ever heard of. And it was their B team. Uh, look, that's a big win for them, isn't it? They see that as a big win. Uh, they'll have a harder game against St Mirren on Sunday, I guarantee you that. And then they've got to go way up to Pataudry against an Aberdeen team who are absolutely flying uh, that will bring them back down to earth. I'm sure of that. Yeah, yeah. As you say, John, St. Mirren will be. I remember going off track here slightly, but we'll we'll get back to what we're talking about, folks. Um, but St. Mirren will give them a game. Yeah, although I think Rangers will win it, but St. Mirren will give them a decent game, John. All right, back to Leipzig, John. So um, obviously they got beat against Liverpool in midweek there. So that's you know that's a bonus. You know, Leipzig getting beat at home against Liverpool. So you know. Um, and they're not invincible. They're a very good team, obviously, Leipzig. We're going to a wee bit more near the game. The 5th of November, we play Leipzig at Celtic Park. Um, but up at the weekend, they play um, Freiburg, John, uh, German team Freiburg at home. So we're going to keep an eye on them until we play them. So we'll keep we'll keep a wary eye on Leipzig against, against uh, uh, Freiburg. Um, all right, John. That wraps up for the Atalanta game. Unless there's anything else you want to add? Nothing. Just I'm happy we didn't get scalped. And the good thing is, we're sitting on four points and they're out of three games. That's pretty good in the Champions League, trust me. It's brilliant. I mean, considering who we've played, you know, that, that Atalanta result is massive, John. It really is a massive point. Well, heard people saying it's a bonus point, but it's beyond a bonus point. It's bigger than a bonus point. It's a great result for Celtic. Um, but uh, as you say, four points out of three games, outstanding, but three home games still to come. So uh, let's wrap up the Champions League for now, John. That's it until we get closer to the 5th of November for the the big game against Leipzig, John. OK, the big preview of the Motherwell game. As I said at the start, John, this is bigger for me than the Atalanta game. This is a tough, tough fixture for us against Motherwell. OK, they lost the last game, Motherwell, but before that, they were they were on good form. So, uh, Kettlewell, he's already came out and said, we can take something out of the game against Celtic. It's, you know, every one of these managers say this, John, don't they? Um, but but Kettlewell, he's confident he's going to take something against Celtic, John. So, this is one where we're going to be less defensively, more attacking, um, and I just think it's going to be a good game. It always is at Fir Park. Aye, yeah, it will be a good game. And like you say, it is always tough at first part, no matter what form Celtic are on. I don't, Celtic, I don't think Celtic are on any great form right now. You have to be a fool to deny that. Celtic are not in great form. But look, that lift against Atalanta, that win against Atalanta, sorry, will give Celtic a fantastic lift. They'll be up for, they'll be up for this game now, Xander. 
they'll feel a wee bit kind of invincible when they're playing against Motherwell. They've stopped a top, top quality team in the Champions League. And uh, if they can keep a clean sheet against Atalanta, there's no reason they can't do that against Motherwell, put it that way. Mm, yeah, I agree, John. It's, um, Motherwell, uh, as I say, John, they're a tough and dogged team. They always have been. Um, uh, they are um, 31 attempts against Celtic, John. Winless, they've no beat us in 31 attempts, so that's good news. Obviously, all this goes out the window because it's a different game when we play them on Sunday. But if 31 attempts, John, no wins against Celtic, whether it's home or away or in the cup, so um, that's good news. Um, the last nine, John, um, for Celtic, uh, away wins for Celtic, so last nine times I've played Motherwell, um, away from home, John will beat them. So, again, it uh, bodes well, does it not? Of course it does, aye. But it's always a tough game there. We've, we've seen the, the hard games that we've had there, hard battles. Uh, it always is. I don't think it's going to be a walkover, of course, but it's always going to be a tough game. Stuart Kettlewell, obviously, he might feel confident. Maybe he's looked at Celtic's form and he's thought, we can take something off of them. I take it that's what every manager's thinking right now. Uh, after that Dortmund game, Celtic are... Uh, have no performed at all, Zander. There hasn't been a game where you've thought, good performance, happy with that. That's no happened since Dortmund. And mm. before Dortmund, they were absolutely flying. Yeah, flying up until Dortmund, wasn't it? Um, yeah, but I think it's going to turn, as you say, John. I think this is a turning point. We've had our bad result, and hopefully that's the last bad result we have this season as regards to, you know, the heavy defeats. Um, but... Uh, out of the nine away games, John, that we've won uh, two or three of them were last minute winners. You've got to remember, you know, it's, it is really tough going to Fir Park. It really is. Um, the game's on Sky Sports. Uh, we all know that anyway. Um, there's going to be a charity walking about Fir Park, John. Just thought I'd quickly mention this. Uh, Callum's Cabin. It's a kids' cancer charity, John. They'll be walking about with buckets. Um, uh, so if any Celtic supporters going to the game, put a wee pound in the bucket because it's a, it's a brilliant cause. Uh, uh, Callum's Cabin is the name of the charity John collecting for kids cancer I'm sure the Celtic fans will give generous, ge very generously there John I they always do it's a, it's a brilliant cause uh, you, you, look, kids it's ill it's it's always a good cause no matter what the situation uh, I like the Celtic fans always dip their hand into their pocket and maybe put a wee pound or two into the buckets uh, great charity Fantastic. So any Celtic fans who see uh, the bucket suit, stick a wee quid in it. It's not going to uh, bust the bank. Stick a wee quid in there. You know, if you've only got £2 in your pocket, just uh, give up your pie at half time and help the cause. That's what I say, Xander. Yeah, yeah, well said, John. Yeah, yeah, and I, th I know the Celtic uh, supporters will do that. Yeah, you're right, John. Um, Okay, let's move on. The referee for this one is David Dickinson. He's the real deal. <laughs> I'll say that more. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's getting old, that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he's, um, he's, he's, uh, he's a decent referee. I mean, this, uh, doesn't he, uh, you know, it's not like he's John Beaton, you know. You don't dread him refereeing Celtic games. That's the way I look at that. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's, he's the referee anyway, John. And uh, you've got Alan Muir on the bar, so that's that's what we're up against at the weekend, folks. So um, Motherwell five to one to win the game. That's your price on Motherwell five to one. The draw is six to one, and Celtic are two to seven, which I make that roughly three to one, four to one in the middle, somewhere in between that. The uh, one to three, uh, one to four. Um, so hot favourites yet again. Uh, okay, ones to watch, John. Ones to watch, players to watch. Um, Ibai, the striker, decent player. Lennon Miller, decent. Jack Robinson, decent. Uh, who else have we got? Blair Spittle, I think. He, no, he left. Uh, Blair Spittle left, didn't he? He's away from Motherwell now. Um, Tavers, he's still there. Um, Theo Blair, John. So they have got uh, a few decent players. Motherwell definitely wants to watch there. Aye. Is it Dundee United Blair Spittle went to? I can't remember. Is it, John? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, John. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I know he did leave, didn't he? I'm, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure he's away now. But he was a decent player for them, Blair Spittle, so it's a bonus that he's away, to be honest with you. Aye, Andy Halliday as well, of course, plays for Motherwell. Uh, he'll be right up for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Andy Halliday. You know, 
just when you when I hear that name, you just know he's going to battle his heart out against Celtic. And of course, when he plays against his old club Rangers, he's he's, he's very kind to them. <laughs> Yeah, crushes the ball to Rose Head every time. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe, maybe we're just being paranoid. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he's just a bad player. Uh, anyway, John, uh, players out for the Motherwell. These are 100% out, John, right? So Paul McGinn is out, another decent player, John. He's out. Uh, Slattery, he's out. Peyton, he's out. Jack Vale, he's out. Ross Callaghan, he's out as well, John. These are all decent players for Motherwell. But they were last season anyway. Sam Nicholson, he's out as well, John. So... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six players out as well, John. So um, I think maybe that's why they, they, they didn't get the result last weekend, John. Um, at home. They wanted to go beat one nothing at home. Uh, six of their main players out. Six is a lot, isn't it? Uh, I like McGinn. I think he's a really good player. I think all the McGinn brothers are uh, decent players. Absolutely solid players. So I we never seen one of them at Celtic at some point or the other. But John McGinn should have been at Celtic, the best one at the mall. But uh, aye, the McGinn one missing, that's a, that's a big loss for him. He's a good player. Yeah. Aye, six players, Sander, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, and they've still got a lot of players there that are, that are fit and available that are very good players, John. So he's got like a half decent wee squad there, Kettle Well. Um, so uh, it's definitely one minute to be 100%. It definitely is. Every player's got to be 100%. Now let's touch on the, on the Celtic team then, John. Big Vickers, no further news as, as we record this. There's no news uh, if he's going to be playing or not. Everybody thought he was going to be playing in midweek, but we both said he wasn't going to be playing, John. So we were both right. It's not very often that happens. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, John, what do you think? Big Carter Vickers fit and available. If he is fit and available, will they get picked because of the, the performance that, you know, the big American put in, John? He's, um, big trust he was outstanding against Atalanta, as you say. You're man in the match, in fact. Um, so what, what does he do, Brendan, here? Does he, does he drop, you know, trust him and bring in Carter Vickers if he's fit? Or does he keep it status quo and keep skills beside trust him? What's your thoughts at this point anyway, John? Yeah, I've got no idea what to think after Trusty's performance against Atalanta. I thought he was man of the match, like you said. I thought he was out, absolutely outstanding, solid as a rock. By the way, Blair Spittle plays for Hearts, Sander. That's no way uh, Dundee United, it's Hearts. All right, okay. I, I knew I'd seen him recently. But, uh, yeah, decent player, John. Decent player. I like him. Aye, he's a good player, Blair Spittle. Aye, I've always liked him. Um, yeah. but anyway, back to Celtic. Carter Vickers. This might be the time to give him a run out in the game. You know, he might start with uh, Trusty and bring on Carter Vickers as a, as a sub or vice versa. And he might start with Carter Vickers and bring Blair, Blair Spittle. <laughs> 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 he, might, he might bring Trusty on as a sub and start with yeah. Carter Vickers. Uh, I don't know, but I think this might be the time to give Carter Vickers a wee run out, Sander. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think if Cameron's 100% fit, I think he'll start, no matter how good Trusty was against At Atalanta, John. Which is a bit unfair, really, isn't it? Because Carl Vickers has missed more than half the game so far this season. So uh, I think Big Trusty's just beginning to settle into the squad, John. That's the thing. That's, that's what I personally think is happening just now. I think it's taking him a wee uh, three or four games to settle in, and he's beginning to find his feet. John, so uh, only the manager knows what's going to happen. We don't even know if Carter Vickers is fit or not either, John, but um, Greg Taylor, he's definitely out. So uh, I don't know what's happening with Greg Taylor, John. Um, obviously, we've got this issue with his contract as well. He's now injured also. It's just a bit of a mess, to be honest with you. We need Greg Taylor back fit as soon as possible. And we also need that contract situation sorted out as well. I, I think Greg's happy at Celtic. He's always got a smile on his face. He loves all the players. Um, he's happy enough, Greg. He'll get that contract sorted. I'm sure that will get that will get done eventually. But uh, well, it's a good time for Alex Valley anyway. To you know, he's. I think he's playing quite well. I prefer Greg Taylor over him. I'm not going to lie. I think Greg's a better left back. But he's. While he's on the bench, he's, you're see, starting to see the best out of Alex Valley, I think. So that can't be a bad thing. He's getting more time, and the more time he's getting, the more impressed I'm starting to be with him. But 
I was going to ask you, do you think uh, there's a chance of the two Americans playing as the centre-halves, uh, pushing Liam Scales at the team? I think it'll only happen, John, if he's injured or if he's suspended. I think that's the only time that's going to happen. I think Scales was immense on Wednesday night. Uh, and I think that will happen, John, but only with suspensions and injuries. Or they might try it in a cup, John, maybe a cup game. Both USA internationals playing at centre-back, you know, one right centre-back, one left centre-back. Yeah, it'd be good to see, John, to see how, how that, um, you know, how that works out. You know, it's, it's a dilemma for Brendan, you've got to admit, it really is. Especially with the way, you know, both scales and trusty are playing just now, John. They're beginning to click together, especially against Atalanta. They never put a foot wrong. I know. Uh, just the, the fact that he doesn't have a right foot, that still really annoys me. That, But look, he's defending and, and he's bravery. And he gets up for corner kicks as well, which is good. He, he's not put one in the net yet. But he does get up high for them. He beats a lot of defenders to the ball and gets a shot away. But I, I'm i starting to see a player in Trusty. I've never said he was a bad player. I just, like I just says, I've always says I don't like the fact fact that he uh, lacks the use of a right foot. He can't use it at all, Xander. That makes me very uncomfortable seeing him playing at right centre-half. I just wonder how he would be at left centre-half. I think he would be better than Scales. That's what I was asking. But I'm, I agree with you. I, I don't ever see him pushing Scales at the team. I think Scales is... I don't know. Aye. The best defender at Celtic, probably, I'm going to say it. Well, we don't know who's uh, if he's better than him or no, John. But I've never seen him at his proper position. So once once that does happen, happen, John, we've got a wee, uh, a wee chance to see how it works out. So uh, it'd be interesting. It'd be good to see, actually, just to see how they, they fare together and in, in the, the, the defence at the same time, the Ameri both American lads. Um, all right, John, let, let's, before we go any further, John, I want to quickly mention the competition. We mentioned that yet for this week's correct score and any scorer in the game. Uh, one guess each into the comments um, to win. Uh, you can take your pick this week, a prize, by the way, folks. Any metal wall plaque that you of your choosing, you can have the, the Lisbon Lions one that it's on the screen, or you can have the, the Henry Larson one. The choice is yours, folks. You can have the, you know, the Green Brigade one. Um, yeah, John, uh, choice of prize this week for the correct score. Um, that's... Metal wall plaques, they're outstanding. Uh, the, the competition's a lot tougher, John. We've not had a one on three weeks, actually, because we've added the, the goal, any goal scorer uh, in the game, whether it be for Motherwell, whether it be for Celtic. Um, so a wee bit more tougher. So correct score and any scorer, folks, and you can have your choice of prize this week. Aye. Uh, I could be uh, plaques then. They are good. But I will not get any uh, correct... It's hard to predict the correct score. I know a lot of people enter it on Facebook and YouTube for that matter, but it's hard to predict the correct score in a game. Also, one of the scorers, it's hard to uh, predict that, Xander, so that's why you've not had any winners for a few weeks. Mm. Apart from that, Celtic's results, have they been great either, have they? Everybody predicts wins when we've uh, been kind of struggling, really, I think. Uh, but tomorrow's yeah. the time to put it right, I think. Uh, Sunday, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it is, John. Um, so that's one guess each, folks. Anyway, um, good luck with that, everybody. And uh, obviously, if there's more than one correct entry, it goes to a draw, a prize draw, if there's more than one correct entry, which is highly unlikely, because I've not put the competition on Facebook this week. I've uh, just not had the time. been very busy. That's why we're doing the preview of the day, the uh, post-match of the day for Atalanta, John. Just been very busy. Um, all right, John, that's the competition anyway. We've, we've mentioned that. Um, let's get back into the, the game, uh, the Celtic game. Um, so, yeah, John... Uh, the defence will be interesting if Carter Vickers is in, if, if he's uh, fit. Sorry, if he's fit, it will be very interesting to see what Brendan does. Um, let, let, since we're talking about that, let's do the, the one to eleven uh, pr predicted lineup. John, what are you thinking? Um, I don't know if you want to look at this as in Vickers being fit. I think we should because I think he'll be fit for this one. Uh, he might be on the bench. He might come on and make a sub appearance, or he might start for maybe. An hour or so, I d really don't know, but I'm going to go for Schmeichel, Scales, Trusty, Johnston, Valley, McGregor, Bernardo, and what's his name? Engels. And up front, 
Maida hasn't been doing anything the last few games, Sander. I'm not sure if he's going to drop him for a game or no, I don't know. So he might start with Palmer, Kyogo, and Nicholas Kuhn. Yeah, Dad, you may need a rest, John. I think you're right. I think I actually think you're right again because he's he's looked very leggy the last few games. He played he played his international games for Japan as well, didn't he? So he maybe needs a wee rest, John. I think you're right. And Palmer looked okay when he came on there today as well, actually. Um forgot to mention that. Uh, just off the back of that big hat trick, of course, against <laughs> against the Irish team. Um yeah, John, I think you could be right, but no, I'm going to go away and start him. Um Maida, I think it's a vital game, massive game away from home. And I think he's going to start with his Tati again as well, John. I think Steve Bernardo is going to be her Tati. But apart from that, yeah, John, it's the exact same team. We don't know, we're just guessing. Um, that's um, that's all we do, isn't it? We just guess the team. Uh, we'll find out uh, around about two o'clock on Sunday, I suppose. Um, but it seems going to be. Right, John, a wee prediction then. Me correct score prediction. What are you thinking? Uh, with my Celtic spin, it's hard to It's hard to try to make predictions. It always is. I'm going to say 3 0 Celtic. Yeah, yeah, 3 1. Yeah, 3 1 Celtic. Mother will got a goal in them, maybe, because I know they'll be struggling lately to score goals. So 3 1, I'll say anyway. Um, although, in saying that, we did, you know, defend brilliantly against Atalanta. So maybe, maybe uh, I've said the wrong thing there. But I'll stick with, I'll stick with 3 1 to Celtic. Don't care as long as we get the three points. Uh, we play at the same time as Rangers on Sunday. They kick off at three o'clock as well. Like another home game against uh, St Mirren this time. So another home game for them. Uh, right, okay. Right, that's that. That's that then, John. Um, as long as we win the game, as I say, John, I really don't care. It's, it's three points in the bag is all we're all looking for. Uh, it's always a good wee atmosphere as well at Fort Park, isn't it, John? There's always that, especially when the Celtic fans bring, bring their smoke bombs and that and, you know, it circulates around the stadium. It just, it just, it looks brilliant for Park sometimes when Celtic are playing there. I think it's just a brilliant wee atmospheric stadium. Aye, it's a good wee stadium for Park. No smoke bombs though, I think they're banned now. That's it. Celtic get a fine if uh, anything like that's seen. So we won't see any of that, I don't think. Yeah, uh, John, just to Mar- I, sorry, John, I know it's the last two games. There's not been any. There was nothing in Atalanta. And there was nothing against Aberdeen as well, uh, and the, you know, the Green Brigade. Then there was nothing, nothing at all. So maybe you're right, John. I think I think the Celtic fans will take note of this. Aye, and no before time. It's uh, we can't afford to be getting fines, Xander. That, that's all it comes down to. We can't afford to be getting fines for Celtic. It doesn't look good for the club. It doesn't look good on the fans. Uh, and Celtic fans right now are sitting. An example by no letting them off, which is good, I think. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's just hope it's foggy then. <laughs> it brings a good atmosphere, it does. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Bruno Watch, John. Uh, Scott Brown. Uh, last week wasn't great for him, was it? Uh, getting his, his 1 0 defeat, was it? Was it 1 0? I can't remember. 2 1, sorry. Livingston wins it. 2 1 against Livingston defeat, John. So he's got to bounce back this week against. Uh, I think it's Airdrie the plays on away from home, so it doesn't get any easier for for Bruni. Um But he's he's a, he has a decent manager up there at Air United, John. So um, it's a tough one, John, away from home against Airdrie. Uh, but I think he'll bounce back. I think he'll get the win there at the weekend. I, I've not seen Air United this season. No one time I've seen Air United was against Celtic when they played in the friendly, but. I don't know what's going on there. I've not looked at them to see how they're playing or anything, so I couldn't tell you. Um, I, I can only say every week, but we can only wish Scott Brown all the best. If I can find the game, I'll make sure and try and watch it to see what they're actually like. I know they were flying at the top of the league, but it seems the last few weeks have took a bit of a hit into it. It's, it's not looking good right now. No, it's not looking good for Brown the new, but uh, they can bounce back well. I'll be one against Airdrie. Um, I, I suppose that's uh, it's always possible. He, as I say, John, he's a he's a decent manager, so I'm sure it'll bounce back. Um, all right, that's Brendan Watch then, John. Um, I, I, don't, I, I was looking at the, the fixtures for this weekend, John. Dundee against St. Johnson. Um, in fact, we'll quickly run through some predictions, right, because we always like to do this, don't we? So let, let's start with Dundee against St. Johnson. Uh, we prediction after you, John? 2-0 Dundee. 
2 0 Dundee. I'll say one each. Uh, Ross Count against Kamarnock. Kamarnock, big lift after beating Rangers. I never tire of saying that. I'm going to go for a Kamarnock narrow win. 2 uh, 1. 2 1, right. Uh, it's Ross County. It's tough up there, isn't it? 2 1 co- uh, County. Sorry, 2 1 County. Aberdeen, Dundee United. Big one on Saturday, isn't it? Um, big derby there. Aberdeen, Dundee United. Um, <laughs> I mean, if Aberdeen win, obviously they go three points clear at the top of the league. So, what are you thinking, John? Big derby up at Aberdeen. I I will watch that one. I'll make sure and see that one. I've watched every Aberdeen game this season. I'm going to go for an Aberdeen win. Aberdeen 3, Dundee United 1. Yeah, John, 2-0 to Aberdeen for me there. For the Dons to go three points clear of Celtic. For Celtic, a game in hand. Let's go on to Sunday. Hibs and Hearts, John. That's a big one. Bottom bottom of the league clash. That's another one uh, that we could maybe watch. Because that's one before the Celtic game. Hibs and Hearts, John, what are you thinking? Uh, Hearts on the back of a win uh, last night of course 2-0 win in Europe that will give them a wee lift it's, uh, uh, I know Hibs are playing at home but I think Hearts are going to beat them Xander I'm going to say 1-0 Hearts yeah Hearts always do well against Hibs don't they a bit of Easter Road um, I'll say a draw John one each one each there for me and uh Obviously, we know Celtic and Motherwell, so um, don't need to talk about that. Rangers, St Mirren, Ibrox, John. There's only one winner there, isn't there? Don't know about that. Uh, I'm going to say one each. Right, OK, one each. It would be amazing if that was to happen. Um, you know, the managers, you know, the, the fans are raging with their manager. You know, Rangers, apart from last night, obviously, when they got that, you know, 4 nothing win against the Minnows. But... Uh, I don't know, John. Uh, I just think Rangers will win it. So, but I don't think it'll be a four nothing or anything like that. I'll give them. I'll give them a two one, John. Two one to Rangers. Um, okay, that wraps up the SPL fixtures for the weekend, John. Um, but it doesn't really matter. We'll be all interested in Celtic. Uh, three points a must. So we'll, we'll go through a wee handful of comments as well, John. Actually, um, but uh, just want to sum this up before we go into the comments. Um. Aberdeen go three points clear as John, so it does put a wee bit of pressure on us. Aye, there's also pressure on Aberdeen as well, you've got to remember. Uh, Dundee United are no mugs, they're not a great team, Dundee United, but I, th- I think Aberdeen's just going to be far too strong for them. The only game I've seen Aberdeen playing poor this season was the one against Hearts, but they should have been beat. And Hearts went down to ten men. Uh, and that gave them a lift to go in and win the game. But I've seen Aberdeen, every game they've played, that they're too strong for Dundee United, Xander. It's going to be uh, it's going to be 3-1 Aberdeen, and Aberdeen to go top of the league. So it's a must-game win on Sunday, just like every other game, must win. And aye, that makes it even more so. It's exciting, John, isn't it? And it's refreshing to see Aberdeen up there. I know we'll not be saying that with three games to go. And they're still joint top. That'll be a different story then. But right now, as it stands, it's good to see them, you know, well ahead of Rangers, you know, and uh, pushing Celtic as well. It is quite refreshing, I think. It is refreshing. Uh, and like I asked you weeks ago, would you uh, congratulate Aberdeen if they won the league? You say as I, absolutely. And I'm the same. If Aberdeen, Aberdeen did go to win the league, I would be the first to congratulate them. I think that would be refreshing. It would be lovely to see Obviously, it'd be even lovelier for Celtic to win it, of course. But uh, no, my heart's with Celtic. I want Celtic, obviously, to win everything that they're involved in. But if Aberdeen did go into win the league, I would say congratulations and uh, well done. Yeah, of course. Of course, John. Sorry, I broke up a wee bit there, John. Um no, no, everybody would congratulate them. But it's the last thing that we want to happen. I don't think it will happen anyway, John. You know... Their, their downward spiral will, will, will happen eventually, John. You know, they've, they've not got the, the strength and depth there at Aberdeen, I don't think, especially when it comes to spending money, you know. So, if Celtic are struggling come January, they'll just get the checkbook out and strengthen again, John. So, uh, it's good to see just now that Aberdeen are pushing us. Um, but, you know, bottom line is Celtic, I think, will be champions at the end of the season. So, um, all right, John, let's, let's move on then. Um, let's get into some comments. Uh, we've done comments for, for, for about a week, John, so what's, what's the listeners and viewers saying? 
Ah, you know, I was just thinking about Aberdeen there. I uh, look, nobody, I don't want Aberdeen to win the league unless Rangers are well above us. That's the only time I'd be wishing Aberdeen to win the league. But if they did win, I would congratulate congratulate them. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, everybody would join. I think everybody would actually, you know. But no, no, it's uh, uh, we'll start pulling away for them soon enough. Hopefully, hopefully, I know football, anything can happen, but. You know, you can only say, well, don't they, what they've done so far. Uh, but Celtic should have beat them last weekend as well. You've got to remember, that was that was Celtic taking their eye off the ball. That was nothing down, I was down to nothing else than Celtic, you know, taking it for granted that they'd won the game, I think, John. So, uh, we should actually be sitting three points clear of them just now. But it's all if, buts or maybe, isn't it? We've just got to move on. Aye, that's it. Aye, I think we should have beat them last week, especially the last 20 minutes, 25 minutes when they were pounding their goal uh, but it never happened so be it we move on anyway let's get into some comments Under. yeah Roseanne first up she says fabulous night guys my stomach was in knots all night well done to our boys and that's a reference to the Atalanta game I think ah yes yeah, everybody's stomach was in knots John there wasn't a self support there wasn't it uh, because we were holding out for a brilliant result and we did hold out in the end. The final whistle went. It was just relief. You know, it really was relief. Uh, yeah, when the referee added on four minutes, I thought, oh, no, another four minutes of this to go. So, yeah, it was just uh, once that final whistle went, John, it was great to get that point, away point in the bag against a top, top class team. Uh, yeah, Roseanne, everybody felt the same, pal. Aye, me as well. My stomach was in nuts. I think I wore a big hole in my rug walking up and down all night. It was one of the... Couldn't sit down. No. It was just one of the nights. It was horrible, but also uh, it was a really good feeling at the end. Knowing, imagine they scored a last-minute goal after defending like that, how sick you would have been. So, I looked great result, Roseanne. Loved it. All our stomachs were in nuts. So, aye, well done, Celtic. What a result. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Roseanne. Next up is Judith. <coughs> <Yudif. laughs> uh, great result against a top team. Atalanta will go far. They were better than Dortmund. That's what I says. Big confidence booster going into future Champions League games. As a booster, John, you know, this, we're up against Aston Villa, John. So, you know, what I'm hoping for to be Aston Villa away from home is that they've already qualified by that point because they're sitting at the top of the league right now as it stands, they're sitting top. So hopefully, because that's the last game, the time we play Aston Villa, John, they've already qualified. They're putting a weekend team um, and we don't need to, you know, play a full strength Aston Villa team. That's what I'm hoping for anyway, but it never works out like that, does it? So, uh, yeah, John, we can defend away from home like that. Um, that's, that. We're looking for that every time we go away from home from now on. Aye, aye, exactly. That's what we want to see. A lot more defending like that, but better on the counter attack. I think if Celtic had started with Kyogo the other night there, I think we'd have took a goal or two to that game because when the ball was going up to Adam, Adam Eden, he never had the pace to get by that defender. But he's only got half the pace that Kyogo's got. Imagine Kyogo was one of the chances. He was in one and one with the keeper. Um, yeah. But Adam was there to hold the ball up. And I don't. I think he failed to do that the whole night. So, but he wasn't really getting any service. But I think if we started with Hugo, we might have had a goal or two to that. Yeah, I think you're right about Adam. Just quickly, John. I think you're right. He, he never done what he was asked to do. He was more physical. Don't get me wrong. But at that ball was gone up. You know, you're saying clear it, clear it up to Big Adam. It was just coming straight back. You know, so I agree with that. So good comment. Anyway, moving on, Peter Hendry said, Atalanta score a lot of goals, but they also concede a lot too. A draw would be a fantastic result, in my opinion. Hail, hail. Well, you got your wish, Peter. That's what means and I predicted as well, a draw. Yeah, we did, didn't we, Jack? You said one each, I said two each. But it was nothing each, so it's a draw either way. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they do score a lot of goals, uh, but they do also concede a lot of goals. It was sort of a stalemate game, wasn't it? Stalemate, you know, game of chess, you know. But, um, yeah, it was... Just once that by final whistle went, Peter, it was just total relief. And uh, and a good feeling, you know, seeing Celtic performing like that. I you know, but this was not just any team we were playing, John. This was Atalanta, the FA Cup winners last season, beating a very, very good Leverkusen team, John. So, yeah, it was just, it was, it was great to see, you know, um, 
you know, fair play to Atalanta as well. They weren't, you know, weren't huffy or scrappy at the end of the game, shaking all the Celtic players' hands. Yeah, she, you know, they tried everything to beat Celtic, you know, to put that ball in the net. It's just on the night they were up against a formidable Celtic defence. Aye, they tried everything. They threw everything at Celtic. Mm -hmm. uh, and they get nothing for it. Aye, and their players, fair play to them. They were all smiles at the end, uh, talking to the Celtic players and all that stuff. There was a good yeah. uh, atmosphere between the two sets of players as well. So, aye, yeah. aye, Atalanta, what a team. Can only say... Uh, yeah. Uh, I noticed I put, I, sorry, John, I noticed they put a roof on their stadium. That picture I put up last week, David. Uh, but they done. They did do. Sorry, they did do some. You know, revamp to the stadium and they added the roof to that um, bottom stand. So it was the same stadium. It's just it's, it had a roof added over the last three years. So that picture must have been taken about five years ago. So I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd mention that in case anybody was wondering what the stadium was up on the screen. Aye, I don't know. It's hard to tell because it was dark. I wasn't really paying attention to the stadium. I was play, paying attention to the backs to the wall. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I know, but uh, I I bought a night it was, and like I say, Zella four points out of three games. That's really good for Celtic in the Champions League. Uh, something that the worst team in the Champions League history can only dream of, Xander. Yeah, no, no. I'll just let them play their minnows and set our fireworks by beating by beating Aloha reserves. That's not a problem. Just let them do that, John, because uh, they'll get their come up very soon. Don't worry about that. Shelston Juniors reserves. <laughs> yeah, John, I know I've already mentioned it. FCSB reserves. A Romanian uh, team, John. A Romanian team who I've never heard of put out their reserves against Rangers. And it was like November the 5th with the fireworks. It was absolutely hilarious. Loved it. <laughs> I, uh, look, this time of the year, this time of the year, in Glasgow, it's hard to tell because a lot of people let have fireworks even if there's no football game on. But I, yeah, I'd imagine yeah, that nothing went nothing went off on Wednesday night, John. So, <laughs> so you you do the maths, you know what I mean? So maybe they never got their gyros till Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, all right, mate. mate. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what happens tonight. We'll, 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 we'll let people know what happens uh, on Friday night as regards to that. Uh, all right, who was that, Peter John? Uh, that was a brilliant comment. Thanks, Peter. Good comment, Paul. Aye, uh, thanks, Peter. Next up is Rosanna again, she, and this was before the game. She says, "I'm so nervous, but at the end of the day, we can only wish for some good luck." So, good luck to us all for tonight. Just a wee wishful guess: one nil Celts. Close enough, Rosanna. Very close. Uh, they had a wee couple of chances as well, so close, close, and uh, yeah, she was right about the nerves as well because they continued right through the game. Uh, but it was just relief, John. So just relief, to, you know. As you say, John, you imagine if Atalanta would have scored that last because they did get a free kick right in the last thirty seconds, didn't they? To pump the ball right into the box, uh, and imagine they scored for that, John. After watching that game, that full game, you know, uh, how how would you recover from that, really? I know, that's what I said about five minutes ago, Xander. Imagine they scored a late winner after us defending like that. It would have been absolutely heartbreaking. Well, they didn't score. It was just a case of uh, none shall pass. And they kept it up to the final whistle. And uh, good atmosphere between the players at the end. Thanks for that, Roseanne. Next up was Paul McComb. He just says, come on the hoops. Thanks for that, Paul. Yeah. Who was your man in the match, John? I've already gave you my man in the match, Sander. My man in the match was big trusty. It could, have, it could have went to, obviously, the goalkeeper, Casper Schmeichel, but I thought Trusty was putting his head in front of absolutely everything and throwing his body in front of everything. I thought he was outstanding, Xander. Him and big skills, actually. Any one of that back five, John, could have got man of the match. I'm going to get to Casper. I thought the goalkeeper deserved it. Uh, I think Scales got the official man of the match, John. He got the, the Champions League man of the match, big skills. So well done to him. But, yeah, I'm getting it to Casper Schmeichel. The saves he pulled off, John, was... Tremendous, you know, some of these clearances as well. Um, but as you say, that the all the whole back five could have easily won man in the match, any one of them. Aye, I, I'm just going to trust you because I didn't expect much from him. And the uh, you know, it, it went right over my expectations and what I was going to see from him. That's why I gave it to him because, because I wasn't expecting that performance. 
and I just thought it was outstanding. Anyway, Paul McComb says, come on the hoops, hail, hail. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Keep them coming in, Paul. Keep the comments coming in. Uh, regular from day one, uh, Paul. Always good to hear from Paul. Thanks, buddy. Rosemary says, uh, nervy night ahead. It certainly was. Oh, bang on. Bang on, 100%. Uh, good comment, Rosemary. Keep them coming in, Paul. Keep the comments coming in. Uh, we've got a big comment from Lisbon Girl, so I'll read that at the end as the last comments end. I'll quickly fl fly through some of the shorter ones. Uh, Rosanna again says, oh, it's tomorrow. She thought the game was on uh, the Tuesday. <laughs> uh, thanks for uh, that, Rosanna. Yeah, yes, yes. She left her comments. She was getting excited on Tuesday. <laughs> Hi, um, so she could relax on Tuesday night and uh, worry about it on the Wednesday again. Uh, thanks for the comments, Rosanna. Keep them coming in, pal. Uh, as many comments as you want, uh, folks, uh, just keep them. As John says, if you want to tell us what you had for your dinner, or if you're you know, worried about something, or if you want to chat about anything, just get it onto the comments and we'll bring them up on the on the, the podcast, folks. Lasagna and wedges. That's what I had last night. Lasagna and wedges. I had um, micro pizza, Chicago Town micro pizza and noodles. Yeah, that's good to keep up that healthy diet, Xander. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, noodles are very healthy. Yes. <laughs> Aye, was it old uh, quat quat noodles? Was it? Uh, quat was it quat? I, I, I don't know. What make the word, John. I don't know. I'm not too sure. But, but the coca is it coca noodles? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But they're beautiful. Curry yeah. flavour, by the way. Curry. Curry flavour, of course. Aye. Yeah. Chicken flavour and curry flavour. That's the best two flavours. You know, you can't get beef noodles anymore, John. I've tried everywhere, unless it's the bachelor's things. Which I just can't eat them. Uh, beef noodles, you can't get them anywhere. I've tried everywhere. So if you, everybody, anybody knows where to get them, let me know. Uh, I bachelor super noodles are disgusting, aren't they? I don't like them myself. They're horrible, horrible stuff. Um, yeah, but no, no I'm looking forward, looking forward to dinner. We haven't had another night, John. I've got no ideas, Andrew. I'll, I'll find out uh, around about seven o'clock. Because right All now right. I'm no hungry and I don't have any plans to have anything to eat yet. So. Anyway, Michael McKeel was up next. He says, a Galtie Mountain boy. Hello, Xander John. The Barstool managers will always attach scales. Same old suspects. We have to be, what's that mean? Banned at it tomorrow. Bang at it, I think he means. We have to be bang at it tomorrow. Another pumping would break my heart. But I'm a believer. We can come out there with something. Aberdeen being a good example. Well, we spoke about Aberdeen being a good example uh, how Celtic should be going to bigger teams and get a result. So I agree with you there, Michael. Aye, the Barstool managers are tightening Liam Scales. Aye. Thankfully, Michael, they're few and far between. But guys like yourself, me and Xander, many other Celtic fans, we all recognise and we have done for a long time. Liam Scales, very, very important to Celtic. He's just one of our top players at the moment. He really is. And that Atlanta game, we got one man in the match. And Yefa, John, he, that was Yefa man in the match. So that tells you everything you need to know. Case closed. Case closed, aye. Aye. I, I like my, Michael's comment there. That's a good comment because anybody that attacks Liam Scales, I'm always on the defensive. I just cannot understand why he gets attacked. And we keep saying, what is it these fans that attack him want? What is it they actually want? You're not going to get better at Celtic. Liam Scales, when he eventually does sell, if he keeps performing like that, is going to sell for 25 million quid. Of course he will, uh, if no more, because he's, he's, he's a rock. He's an absolute rock in that defence. Uh, and that is a good comment from Michael. We made a few good points there, actually. Um, but uh, he did believe they were going to come up with something. So so did we. We both said a draw, John. So... Uh, and we came up with something. <laughs> That's that was uh, that was surprising, John. It was really surprising. I wasn't I wasn't actually expecting, you know, us to come out of there with anything. Um, but they really surprised me, the Celtic lads, and every single one of them. Not just the defence, every one of them. I mean, there was a lot of points in that game where we had ten men behind the ball, John. A lot of times in that game. Um, in fact, probably seventy five percent of that game we had ten men behind the ball. So fair play to every single player out of that that field against that Atlanta. Aye, aye, it was brilliant. I'm proud of every single one of them. Uh, Ilgi's a great lift anyway, continuing into the season. And uh, 
Aye, aye, delighted, as is Michael, as is you, as is probably 99% of the Celtic fans. Yeah, John, okay, let them have their opinions, John, that's, everybody's allowed an opinion, but, you know, don't go to Clyde one phone and threaten the guy. Leave it to your own personal opinion, John, if, if that's the way you feel. The guys, the guys that they are trying his hardest, working his hardest for Celtic Football Club, John, and putting in brilliant performances, Keep your opinions to yourself. You know, don't go on national radio slating the guy. As I said, John, case closed. Case closed. I love Liam Scales. I love every Celtic player. We're all Glasgow Celtic. We love them. Anyway, thanks for that, yep. Michael. Next up was we would never sell a club. News just in that Carter Vickers will be fit for the, the Atalanta game tomorrow evening. I don't know where you got that news for. We would never sell a club, but i never seen anything uh, other than he wasn't going to be ready for the game. Yeah, no, John, there was rumours circulating before. John, I've got to admit, I've got to agree with the, the comment. Uh, we would never sell a club. There was rumours circulating that he was going to be fit. But there was, I was listening to you, John. I was, I was more listening to you when you says if he was going to have any chance, he would have been on the bench against Aberdeen. But he was nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. So we've seen videos of him training before the Aberdeen game as well, remember? And it meant nothing. So it meant absolutely nothing. And uh, we both said he was going to be unfit for this one and the trustee would start. And we were right. But, uh, you know, there was rumours circulating, John, I've got to admit. No, no, I don't disagree with it. I'm just saying i never seen the rumours. i never heard anything about Carter Vickers being ready for the game. But yeah. I'm sure there, look, there's always rumours about everything. So I, I um, just got to be careful where you pick up your rumours from and... Uh, Till I see proof, I don't trust them. Anyway, thanks for that. We would never sell a club. I never yeah. heard it myself. Yeah, I was I was quite happy when I read, read that message, but obviously it, it, the comment I messaged is back within 10 minutes and said it was nonsense, so fair play to the commenter as well. So, uh, no, John, it's, I wouldn't say we missed Cameron Carter Vickers against Atalanta, would you? Uh, no, no, the way Trusty performed, no, we definitely didn't miss him. Um, aye. No, I just never heard the news, that's all I'm saying. Uh, we always love, we would never sell a club on here, always leaves good comments. And I know there's a lot of replies to that comment, and one of them being, we would never sell a club debunking, which mm -hmm. you just yeah. said. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, you can only go by what you hear. Sometimes I've said stuff on here, and as well, it's been nonsense. <laughs> as regards <laughs> to <the world. laughs> I'll, read, I'll read it, I'm going to read it, we, we would never sell a club's debunking right after it, just so... She knows that I've read it. And she says, don't quote me on it as it's just rumours that he could feature tomorrow night. Uh, there you go. There you go. She says, by the way, she says, trusty and scale scares the life of her. Um, well, trusty wasn't performing the last few games, but, you know, uh, scales has always been uh, decent and there's more than decent. But the partnership wasn't clicking, John. So that was the first time we saw the partnership clicking. I'm sure... We would never sell a club for a pound's, pound's uh, opinion has changed. Um, let us know in the comments, pal, if your opinion's changed on Trusty and Scales. Aye. I know she's a big fan of Liam Scales. Um, but the Trusty and Scales partnership, it did scare the life out of me as well, to be honest with you, the two of them together. Uh, but look, Trusty against Atalanta, if you ask me, he showed why we paid six, seven million quid for him or whatever it was, because I thought he was an absolute colossus, trusty. Yeah. I mean, if we start seeing that every single game from him, we've nothing to worry about. Yeah, exactly, John. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, yeah, thanks for the comment. We would never sell a club for a pound. Uh, John, uh, lesbian girl's comment, and John, if you want to give us that, the new then, John, and we'll, we'll call it a day there, buddy, because that's us at one hour. Right. Liz Girl says, 2-1 to the boys was a prediction. She says, can I just say thank you so much for all the lovely comments and prayers from everyone in the Celtic Forever family. It's honestly overwhelming, but appreciative. Uh, he got a few days, well, she's talking about her, her stepdad, of course. He got, a, he got home for a few days while he had a few days off from the treatment, but had to still go up to the beasting every day for bloods. Uh, he went up yesterday and got kept in, but to be honest, he's so weak, I'm just glad he's handling as well as he has, so thank you for your prayers, I count every single one of you blew me away, 
with your support, considering a lot of you don't really know me, although I've been watching the pod, the, the pod from afar for quite some time, and friends with Xander, who I also want to thank for just being consistently him and always there for everything at all when I'm just ripping the piece. Also, John, who although I've not known like Xander, but now think of him as another good friend made for life, Everyone in the Celtic Forever family need me for anything at all. Please just shout. It can be done. If it can be done, it's done. Standard. Hail, hail. That's a beautiful message, Lisbon girl. Thanks very much. Yeah, she's she, she's a nice she's a nice girl, Lisbon girl. She really is. Um, and uh, we're always here for you, pal. And hopefully your, your stepdad uh, does pull through his treatment. Um, obviously, that's good news. He got home as well, John, and uh, and, and that he's. He's also a wee bit better, John, but obviously, obviously he's 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 gone through the treatment and it's a tough, tough time. It's a tough, tough time for our family, John. So our prayers, our prayers are still with her. Um, so take care, Lisbon Garrett, and keep the comments coming in, pal. And thank you for that lovely comment. That's a lovely comment. Sorry for reading it out, bud. Lisbon Garrett was very dry there, reading the comments. I should have took a drink before I read it, but we, get, we know exactly what you mean. I and it is the Celtic Forever family here, everybody's friends here and if ever anybody wants a podcast that's family friendly we keep it light and we welcome everybody and we worry about everybody and we say prayers for everybody that needs them uh, so everybody's welcome to this the Celtic family, best of luck to your stepdad, that's all we can say, Lisman Gerald, lo uh, lovely message that was yeah, yeah, yeah and take care pal um, uh, you're always welcome on this also, Lisbon Girl did the, you know, the, the poems for the channel as well. So, yeah, just keep in touch, pal. Um, anything you need from us, just let us know, pal, and, and we'll be there for you. Um, yeah, that was a nice comment, John Winter. Um, okay, John, let's move on then. Uh, that's us wrap, wrapped up. Uh, what's your final We sum up then, John, for the game against Motherwell? Uh, I think we'll get a huge lift from that Atalanta game. Of course, the players are going to be tired, so you might see a few rested players. That's why I'm saying maybe Palmer will start. Uh, Palmer. We don't know. We don't know what the start lineup's going to be, but you might see a few rested players. We don't know what kind of physical state the Celtic players are going to be in after that, because that was one of the hardest shifts Celtic have ever put in that I've seen in my life. And thankfully... They got something out of it, so in that sense, it's going to give them a huge lift. But uh, we've had three days rest, so you might see a full team starting, Xander. I don't know, but like I say, it's a big, big lift, and that's why I think Celtic are going to take huge confidence for that and go out and win that game, hopefully win it comfortably. Yeah, yeah, John. Yeah, you say 3-0, I say 3-1. All right, John, that wraps it up. We quick mention of the competition one more time. Correct score and... Any goal scorer in the game, one guess each into the comments. More than one correct entry, it goes to a draw to win the the, the frames, the metal frames, uh, brilliant prizes there. Uh, so get your entries in, folks. You've got to Sunday round about half two, I suppose. That's uh, the cut off time. The other frame on the screen there, the frames that's your uh, what do you call them? Green Brigade one, that's your Lisbon Lions one, that's your Henrik Larson one. Uh, just brilliant prizes, John. Um, Okay, get your, get your guesses in, folks, because uh, it's not on Facebook this time, so you've got a better chance of winning it. Uh, less entries, so you have a better chance of winning it. Let's get your, get your entries in, folks. Good luck to Celtic on Sunday. You know, it's, we're, going, we're going to be playing catch-up, I'm afraid, against Aberdeen. Even if they get a draw, we'll still be playing catch-up. So uh, good luck to the boys on Sunday as well. Uh, nothing else to add, John, so thank you for coming on, buddy. I uh, appreciate that, and we'll catch you for the post-match, probably on Sunday as well, actually. All right, Santa, I'll speak to you Sunday. Hell, hell. Hell, hell, buddy. Catch you later, John. Cheers. <laughs>